How many times have you moved in your life to a new house, an apartment, a condo? If you're homeless on the street, you're constantly moving. In my special report, Unsheltered Truth, I show you why it's called Sweep and Repeat. It's moving day for 24-year-old Samantha. I was going to buy a bigger tent yesterday, but I... I didn't have it, the funds for it. I Sam's been living here, a loading dock in southeast Portland. This morning, the business owner told her it was time to go. Where will you stay tonight? Um, probably this car lot over on Sandy. Sam has been working with Transition Project. She's on a list to get into housing, but until then, the street is her home. Across the river in downtown Portland, the city ordered this group of homeless to pack up their sidewalk camp. No, he doesn't usually have a tent. We're usually outside. They will set up a new camp a few blocks away. And just up the street, I'm following a young woman named Princess. She's been on this sidewalk for the last few months. She's been notified of a sweep. Her tent and belongings will be removed. Well, life in general for you. Oh. Well, it's not my, my, not my comfort yet. But. In talking with her, Princess appears to have mental health issues. She's not moving. And what about Samantha? Well, after being kicked off the loading dock, Sam has set up her tent just a block away with a group of other homeless. It doesn't really matter. The city has already posted notice. This sidewalk will be cleared within 48 hours. Two days later, they make good on that promise. They just came in and they started ripping tarps off of our tents and and just like were totally rude to me and like like were asking if anyone was in the tent and if I was telling them my real name. And so we give a 24 hour notice. We do our postings on Fridays. So we actually give them more than 24 hours. We give them a weekend. Portland police officers Ryan Angweiler and Tim Angstrom do their jobs with precision and compassion. We're the only two officers in the entire city that have this job, and our full-time job is to go to the camps, uh, do whatever outreach we can, office services. These officers know Sam. We've done a referral on her a while back and are kind of guiding her through the process, trying to get her off the street and into housing. But while waiting for housing, Sam will remain living on the street, just not here. And where will most of these people go after this? You know, we, we try to guide them, uh, but we can only guide them so far. Another group of homeless moving to another sidewalk, loading dock, doorway. It's sweep and repeat. I'm not proclaiming that sweep and repeat has no effect. I just think there's a group of people for whom the options are so slim, you're just going to keep playing whack-a-mole and move them around the city. It seems to me in this business, you always have to deal with the reality. It's one thing yeah. to say, oh. Bill Russell heads up Union Gospel Mission. It drives people more underground, deeper in, more into hiding. And then the question is public policy, is, is, is that what we want? Or do we want to draw people into a place where they can get help? Yeah, we got uh, chicken, pasta, Italiano. Union Gospel Mission's search and rescue team knows where to look for the homeless. Each night they patrol the streets. They're all too familiar with sweep and repeat. I would say there's probably 10 tents. And we went last time and they were, got, I mean, completely swept. So it looked like they were never there. Sorry, we don't have anything for headaches. Inside this tent near the Ross Island Bridge, a woman nicknamed Mama. Her needs are basic. Blankets and uh whatever you know that keep us uh, warm and and uh, you know clothes and food whenever you know we uh, you know are able to you know get it and stuff she's married to a man named shadow we both uh, have seizures and mental uh, problems and nightmares and stuff are you able to get the mental help you need out here the medications and things uh, no not far from mama another stop Jane is happy to see the rescue crew. We've been trying to stay off the radar, you know, and it's just like we haven't had any interactions with the police whatsoever except for maybe a couple times, and that was Officer Ingstrom. Uh, come on, Mama, you're okay. Come on. Jane and her boyfriend have been living here for the last eight months, so far avoiding a sweep. His bike station for when he works on his bike, and then I got my little section right there. 
For the rescue crew, it's a long night. Stops under overpasses and bridges. These same tents and carts will disappear next week and reappear the following week. Sweep and repeat. This is where they come through at. Greg Baker heads up Blanche House, which has been helping Portland's homeless for 70 years. Baker says Portland now has a national reputation. People come here and say, I was in Portland. All that atmosphere was so nice. The mountains were beautiful. The grapes and all the food, they got more of that. The salmon was wonderful. They talk about all these great things. And they say it's a nice place to visit. But you know the last thing they say? They say, but I don't understand why they've got such an intense homeless problem out there. And they don't talk about that for five seconds. They talk about that for five minutes. Disheartening to be, just call this my city, city I love to see what's happening here. And Seth Longacre runs a Northwest Portland shoe and apparel business with his brother, Zach. They're lifelong Portland residents. He's compassionate, but frustrated with what he sees. We can move it around the city, and that's what happens. If I, you know, we call and they say, okay, for a week it's gone. It's over in Springwater Corridor. It's in Southeast Industrial Area. It's over by the Rose Corridor. It's, it just moves around. But now the problem's gotten so big, when it moves, it doesn't move very far because it's, there's already somebody there, and there's already somebody there, and there's already somebody there. And now we're getting, that's my corner, that's my corner, that's my corner, that's my, you know, tent city. 30 years ago, in my report on Portland homeless, there were no tent cities. No one ever imagined the thousands of unnamed faces in tents we see today. I get it. I feel terrible. There's, there's people don't have a place to go. And I don't know who that's on. It's on all of us, I guess. Princess, it's Jeff again. How are you? Back on a downtown sidewalk at 11th and Columbia, Princess has paid no attention to a notice to pack up. The cleanup crews came, removed her tent, cleared the sidewalk, there was one thing they didn't take. Late that night, as a light rain falls, Princess is curled up on the sidewalk in a wet blanket. They took her tent, her belongings, they left Princess behind. That's the unsheltered truth. Pretty sobering Breaks that that happens yep. in a city like Portland. Yeah, and that's not far from the coin tower, and I know a lot of us walk by, by her, and we wanted to know, well, what happened to Princess? Princess is still there. She's now set up a makeshift tent with umbrellas, so she's been there going on her third month now. And we'll continue to follow Princess and the other homeless as well. Now, tomorrow I want, to join, I want you to join us. We look at the dangers of homelessness. It's a story we call Theft, Trash, and trouble. That's tomorrow as Unsheltered Truth continues right here on Coin 6 on our 5 o'clock news.